What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this beautiful Tuesday night. Uh, it is about 8.36 p.m. here on the July 19th, 2022 date. Looking at uh, 1.3 earthquake on the globe. The latest there in Southern California, it looks like, showing up there on the map. Let's go ahead and look at latest activity here from the USGS map here. Showing some movement across the globe. There is a 2.5 there in the geysers area. Looks a little active there today. Some earthquake activity in the hydrothermal fields here in the Clear Lake volcanic area. Uh, looking at a trail of movement here across this area of the Sierra Nevada. Uh, looks like around the Long Valley Super Volcano eastward and westward here. A little spotty activity kind of in a linear fashion there. Nothing big going on. Uh, looking at the 2.5 and above, there's only that 1.3.1 .1 from this morning time frame. So a little spotty microquake activity out there throughout the desert. Um, and of course some activity down here in the Ridgecrest region. Looking at Southern California, some activity also north of Riverside down through the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Nothing major going on out here around the southern section of the San Andreas Fault. Looks like maybe there was one here. Uh, looks like about 16 kilometers earlier this morning time frame. Actually, this was kind of overnight last night, a 2.5. Uh, but the rest of the segment here, the plate boundary looks pretty quiet. No major swarms to report. Uh, and also no earthquake activity out here around the Hoover Dam area. Uh, I'm sure you guys seen that uh, explosion they had there at the dam. It comes to find out it was a transformer malfunction, uh, which does happen on occasion. And of course... Uh, uh, I'm sure they're going to get it going. It's a pretty lengthy, uh, probably a little lengthy process, but I'm sure that we'll get it back up and fixed. Explosions like that don't happen too often at a major uh, dam uh, that produces quite a bit of power to about uh, 1.3 million people, uh, at least according to the one of the reports there that I read. So, uh, yeah, no earthquake activity out there around that region. Up north, yes, a little bit near the Eureka area of Nevada. A couple small microquakes out there in the desert once again popping off. But overall, seismic activity looks pretty normal and typical. No major swarms. Uh, out here in Cedar, Utah area, this area has seen a little bit of swarming again. Uh, this has been ongoing and off going, off and on I should say, over the past few months. Up against the hills here, up against the mountain ranges, very shallow earthquake activity in that area of the state. If you look out east here, aside from one little earthquake in Oklahoma and one out here in the Elgin area of South Carolina, this one was from this morning, uh, looks pretty quiet. It's only a 2.1 out there in South Carolina today. A little activity up into the Washington region as well across the uh, Devil's Mountain Fault Zone. This one is pretty lengthy and it could be a damaging fault. Uh, it does lead towards the Victoria area, a little populated region out there couple fault systems play a major seismic hazard risk in the uh, Pacific Northwest and areas up here into the uh, Vancouver Island ranges. Let's see what we got. While we're on this topic, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map tonight. Pull up the trimmer map. Uh, a major drop in trimmer from last night. We had 200 and something. Tonight, only 35 epicenters of trimmer down here into the southern Oregon region uh, underneath this area, about 35, 45 kilometers underneath Grants Pass area down at the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, getting back to earthquake activity up here into the Alaska region. Uh, what can we say? Look, it's pretty typical, just like California. It's always, uh, always microquake activity out here throughout the state of Alaska. It's a major subduction zone. As far as any large scale movement goes, pulling up to 2.5 and above, uh, a couple threes and some fours. The latest quake is a 4.4, .4, uh, a little bit ago, earlier this afternoon it looks like, over here along the Aleutian Trench and another earthquake, another 4.1, that one a little bit earlier, uh, but basically within the same region here. Japan Trench. Kurokamchaka Trench all looks pretty quiet. This western portion of the Pacific Ring of Fire is awfully quiet once again. 
did have one 4.5 in the Russia area. This one's somewhat deep though into the Kuril Kamchatka Trench at 135 kilometers down there. Um, so I'm sure it's just a matter of time before this thing really gets moving. It's been awfully quiet within this segment here of the Pacific Plate. Some activity spread out here around the Philippines down into the Indonesia area and also up here in the Java Trench where we see a couple earthquakes down there around 50 kilometers a 5.3 and a 4.5 into this area of the Java Trench. Up north a little movement out around the Myanmar area looks like a 4.3 at 111 kilometers and a little activity up through the China region Middle East as well but uh, most of the activity we still Still haven't seen a whole lot of relief uh, for the West Coast regions. A lot of activity still back building here along the Eastern Pacific, uh, the Aleutian Trench, a Middle America Trench showing some activity as well. Uh, looks like uh, off the coast of Mexico into, uh, what, what do we got, 4.4 at 10 kilometers. This is kind of along the Pacific Plate and the, and the uh, uh, Cocos Plate region little micro plate area in the Guatemala Basin. Of course, down here, the Nazca plate, a little bit larger, showing quite a bit of activity into the Peru-Chile Trench, into the subduction zone here. Some of these earthquakes stretching down there at about 200 kilometers, at least for a 4.3. Most of this activity from this morning and early afternoon time frame. Uh, Puerto Rico region, not too active today. A couple earthquakes, not uh, that big of a deal, 11 of them. No major swarms to report around the Puerto Rico Trench area or areas eastward around the Caribbean Plate. Let's go ahead and zip over here to Hawaii real quick. See what we got going on here around the Lohi Seamount. Still showing some movement out here at this submarine volcano. Quite a few twos. Upper 2.9 there as well. Latest quake looks like earlier this afternoon a 2.1. This is still kind of ramping up a little bit. Some movement kicking up here around the Kilauea Volcano. Uh, looking at an increase in activity, it looks like. Let's go ahead and check out the HANS notification system. That's uh, the volcano reporting here from many different uh, areas. We'll check out the HVO. The latest update here on Kilauea Volcano uh, shows that the eruption of the Kilauea Volcano remains uh, within, the uh, within the crater. Has continued over the last 24 hours. This has been ongoing for quite some time. Uh, current data indicate that the scenario is likely to continue. So this has been a repeat for quite a while. No significant changes have been noted at the summit or in either rift zone. So uh, things just kind of still, uh, you know, active, so to speak, there at the uh, Kilauea volcano. No noteworthy changes to report there. For now, that's the key word, right? For now, uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, looking at the um, wow, look at this! How quiet it is down here along the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu area. One lonesome earthquake out here in the Kermadec Islands area. 4.8. Uh, this one just a short time ago. Very shallow earthquake activity uh, there in uh, that region of the trench. Let me bring up the. EMSC model here on the earthquake activity and you can see basically the same setup here that the USGS is showing uh, most of the activity confined here Middle America Trench South America Aleutian Trench they're not showing too much here in terms of uh, uh, moderate movement here along the west coast but there it's definitely there if we key in uh, we definitely be able to see it uh, let's I want to check the Gulf of California here and see if we got anything a little earthquake activity in the Gulf there's some of those twos and whatnot being reported by the EMSC, but most of the activity, again, down into the Middle America Trench, but I think we should still watch the uh, the West Coast regions for sure. Uh, we'll check out Yellowstone National Park here. Always do, always have. Yellowstone's been a big, big topic of mine, big study of mine for quite some time. Uh, there is some earthquake activity. Let me, uh, hold on a second here. Let me pull back up the USGS map here. Uh, nothing showing up here on the map as far as 2.5 and above goes. One little lonesome earthquake, a 1.4, at 1957 UTC time. 1957 UTC time? Uh, it's definitely not that one. 1957 is probably going to be this one. 
But I'm kind of curious as to what this one right here is because that earthquake, it's a little more defined one, looks like a bigger earthquake, uh, but centralized over here or towards the eastern section of the park. Now we've seen this before, these little odd earthquakes, and I've talked to uh, the seismologists in charge there at Yellowstone National Park, and sometimes these earthquakes are hard to decipher in location and proximity to the exact degree. It's, it t sometimes it takes them a little while to figure it out just due to the lack of seismograph stations over here. Uh, but that's kind of looks like it's where, uh, where it's kicking off tonight. Um, you see this map here, Soda Butte showed up rather nicely over here on the eastern section of the park, but also at the same time showed up over here along the western section. Now this would lead me to believe it's probably uh, be between a, a 2 and a 3.0 magnitude earthquake looking at these seismographs here uh, uh, with those readings. Uh, and again, nothing showing up from the USGS map yet uh, over here along the eastern section. Sometimes they don't show them at all um, when it comes to the eastern section of the park. But there's definitely a little bit of activity there as we've seen there in this region. But that's about it. Not a whole lot of broad scale activity at Yellowstone. Things looking pretty, uh, just pretty mellow for now. A couple small microquakes earlier in the day. But uh, overall, things kind of calm for now, folks. Let's check out the space weather, solarham.net. Things kind of a calming down a little bit for now. That's not going to last too much longer. We're going to probably see another G1 class storm here kicking up over the next few nights. This is due to a major coronal hole. Kind of looks like a, I don't know what, what does this look like? Looks like a couple different things. Maybe a big question mark or a sickle of some type. Could be a... Who knows what? A little weird. But either way, it's a big one. And it is uh, pouring out quite a bit of solar wind stream at us. And uh, it is Earth directed now. That is the enhancement that we were talking about here a couple nights ago. We were looking for that because that thing was getting bigger. And it is rotating in the view now. So G1 class storm expected July 21st, July 22nd time frame. 70% certainty here of auroras at the higher latitudes, but the mid-latitudes getting in there as well at about 25% chance. So keep your eyes open in the mid-latitudes. Upper tier states, uh, let's see here. Current conditions, uh, as noted here, little index of two. So things have dropped off temporarily, but I don't expect that to last too much longer as uh things things are going to be getting pretty interesting here with uh with that speed with a wind stream here flowing right at us solar flare activity is not that impressive right now uh looking at the solar x-ray flux chart looks like uh staying somewhat steady in the low sea flux range sea flare activity no m flares at all to to, uh, to take note of nothing and uh, these sunspots are looking wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. A couple new developments here, but these are just, I don't know, not doing good. All right, guys, um, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, congratulations to the, uh, of course, the six people that won uh, on the 75,000 subscriber giveaway. Also, we do monthly drawings for our channel members. Uh, and congratulations to Robert. Kozowski, he won a $50 Amazon gift card, $50. So we do do monthly drawings for our members only, kind of a little perk um, for those people that join, aside from uh, some icons and stuff like that that we're trying to get together, and some also some extra content, extra videos uh, away from the earthquake and solar weather topic. Um, just, you know, maybe stuff at home here, out in the garden, uh, it's just been too hot lately to do anything out in the gar garden. 110 degrees every day here in California is not good. It sucks. But uh, anyway, we're trying to include some perks for members to join. If you do want to join, uh, of course, you don't have to. There's no obligation to. But for those that do, we appreciate the members joining. It's helping It's helping the channel grow. And we would like to um, you know, reward those folks for joining the channel. So once again, Robert Kozowski. A uh, big fan here on the channel. See him up in chat quite a bit. Uh, I'm not for sure if he's in here right now or not. Uh, there's a couple Roberts in here, it looks like. 
Uh, so anyway, for those that didn't win, yeah, it looks like Robert was in here uh, an hour or so ago. But uh, for those that didn't win on the um, member-only drawing, we'll do another drawing next month. Uh, it could be something different. It could be free merchandise. It could be another gift card, gas card, um, food card. Who knows? Walmart. I don't know. Whatever, you know, sounds good at the time. And we'll definitely be uh, uh, doing that again next month. But uh, anyway, I smell something burning. That's something I don't want to smell coming in through the vents here. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here. Have a good day. Stay safe. We'll chat you guys a little bit later.